The Italian four-door sedan has been around since the 60s, known to be the fastest sedan and a masterpiece over six generations. Today, Maserati Tampa has given us the 2022 Maserati Quattroporte GT in your Nero Rebelle with that Nerissimo package. New this year is three powertrains or trim options, the timeless Italian exquisite styling on the exterior, the luxury and updated tech and safety on the interior, goes against rivals like your flagship Mercedes-Benz S-Clash, your BMW 7 Series, or the Porsche Panamera. Italian performance, almost a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and we're gonna go over all the specs and details, starting now. Maserati Quattroporte is a timeless icon with an aggressive styling element starting on the lower trim with 4.7 inches of ground clearance. The lower bumper is going to receive large air inlets on the side that brush into that enlarged grille with the Maserati Titan badging that brushes into these standard full LED headlamps. It's a three blade design with a digital camera behind the rear view mirror that enables the auto high beam technology for forward facing vehicles and with a wide depth of the beam so you can see even go with your steering so whenever you're going into corners the wide stance just like the original at 76.7 inches and a height of 58.3 inches this one will be shorter than the bmw and the mercedes but taller than the porsche a little bit less in the width than the porsche but you got to really compare apples to apples when you're looking at the porsche panamera the price tag to that compared to this is going to be a significant increase. The long hood with all those aerodynamic proportion lines that flow into the headlamp assembly over these fenders, encasing these 20 inch Urano gloss black seven double spoke alloy wheels. Red brake calipers cover these Brembo brakes at six pistons in the front at a 14.2 inch ventilated disc. The rear at four pistons, 13.2 inches is ventilated as well. Sky hook, performance suspension with electronic dampers, double wishbone front suspension and a multi-link rear suspension. Both will have your coil springs and your anti-roll bars. The four-door sedan packs the performance on all four corners and nearly 50-50 weight distributing at 49 to 51. So it is super close in comparing that to the Mercedes, to the BMW or the Porsche. This one will be better in your dynamics. This one will also be the shortest at 207.2 inches with the wheelbase at 124.8 inches. What I like about the GT is you now get the badging on the side, aggressive side air vents, Everything blacked out to match this Nero Rebella black exterior paint. The Quattroporte keeps its long, sleek, wide stance as nearly a hundred years of the making of performance and styling. LED tail lamps, your reverse parking sensors, 360 degree reverse camera. I like how the spoiler just pushes out. You got the chrome that's gonna be in between. Everything blacked out here. Working down the lower, you're gonna notice these quad blacked out exhaust outlets with the gloss black in between. So it keeps that timeless classic look but performance to back it, go inside to your power or kick to open tailgate will be the best in class at 18.7 cubic feet. There's a spare tire tucked underneath with your 12 volt rear bench split folds at a 60-40 split. But you know, all this talk about performance, really the big key is hearing that exhaust note so you can see what I'm talking about.
generation of the Maserati Quattroporte continues to pack excitement with engaged driver experience, luxury that's a timeless masterpiece. Maserati backs the performance with a 3.0 liter twin turbo V6 producing 345 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque that's paired to a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission achieving 16 to 25 mpgs that's good for a 0 to 60 around 4.2 to 5 seconds with a quarter mile at 13.3 seconds at top speed at 166 to 203 miles per hour. Now what is this equivalent to? Well this is going to be the lightest amongst all of the rivals. Weight distribution is going to be the best with the Quattroporte at 49 to 51 weight distribution. But you know, when you get into Italian brands, it's like getting an espresso. Some people like it, some people don't. When you first take a sip and it gives you that hard bite, you know exactly what you love. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Maserati Quattroporte GT as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Maserati Quattroporte, you're gonna receive 38.5 inches of headroom, 41.5 inches of legroom, which is pretty spot on with Mercedes, BM, and the Porsche sports bucket front seats. Leather, 12-way adjustments, they're heated, they're ventilated. You have the modern luxury appointed interior. The dash is going to get that contrast stitching with the wood inlays, the Quattroporte badging. You get the silver that's going to outline the whole center for those seamless air vents, which are analog clock that just sets that Italian timepiece right there in the center. I do like how everything is just plush and luxurious. Last year's Mozzie integrated the new 10.1 inch touchscreen with navigation that replaced the old 8.4 unit. The new MIA has the pinch and it has the swipe. Click the home button and it'll take you to three quick tabs. You could click on the top left of them for the comfort and it will bring it up full spec. Click into your app so you can see all the apps we have. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Amazon Alexa, Wi-Fi, Hotspot, streaming, Bluetooth, audio, AM, FM, HD, radio, switch to reverse. You do have full trajectory. It's a 360 degree reverse camera and you do have different camera positionings and it is super clean. It's not going to be the largest screen compared to the rivals, but it fits. I don't necessarily like something that's just over the top that's going to take away from the timeless essence of the Italian design. Elbows are going to be super soft. Open up inside here. You got two cup holders, a 12 volt, and it's refrigerated as well through the climate control. So that way you can keep your cups cold. Open up in here and you got a little area. You can put some change cup holders. I would say you can fit a 32 ounce. You have the ambient lighting around it as well. You have your rotary knob. If you don't want to use the touch, you also have your voice activated control. You have your sport and your comfort with your eco mode as well. Dual climate control in the front. Three spoke leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function, it's heated. The new gauge cluster was implemented in 2021. So it's a carryover, but you can toggle through here and it'll go through an array of information for the driver. As for that door panel, you're gonna get real wood inlays with the silver, memory for the driver, one touch up and down. All the windows are dual pane, the racy contrast stitching and storage in the door panel, you can fit about two to three 16.9 ounce water bottles. This is a driver's car. So you're not really gonna be spending a lot of time in the back seat unless you have a chauffeur. So you will be using this sunroof. You know what, just to see how it is, Let's see how I look back there. For the back seats, I'm at 37 inches of headroom, 43 inches of legroom, so it is pretty spot on with the competition. You have plenty of room, power sunshades in the rear. You can also fold down the back window sunshade right here in the center. You have your heated seats with the gloss black over it, a storage tray, your two air vents in the center, storage behind both of the front seats. Floor isn't completely flat. However, you have so much space back here, it's definitely an executive car. Elbows, gonna be soft. Cup holders in the center, a 20 ounce can fit without any issue. Open up inside here to a USB and a 12 volt. I mean, it's luxury at its best. Door panel is gonna get that wood. You're gonna get the silver with the contrast stitching, one touch up and down. Storage in the door panel, I would say you can fit about two 16.9 ounce water bottles. So it is efficient for this Italian sedan. 
Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting into the center is going to be difficult for headspace because you do sit up. So I'm pretty much grazing against it. However, behind the back of the front seats, I have plenty of space, plenty of butt and shoulder space because this is a wide vehicle. I am blocking the central station for your vents, your heated seats, and to move up and down that shade window in the back. Can it be done? Yes. On a long journey, I'd say just maybe scoot down and enjoy a journey. Realistically speaking, you're only going to fit probably two back here unless you have a family of five and you still have efficiency to do so. You have so much leg space. I can feel the air circulating all around me. The door panels are raised up enough. And if that's not enough shade, just put your power sun shade up so that way you can just enjoy a luxury ride. Taking the 2022 Maserati Quattroporte GT out for our test run, 345 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque. If that's not enough, they have the Modea and the Trofeo, which will go all the way up to 580 horsepower or the optional 424 horsepower for the Modea. So zero to 60 at four seconds to right around five seconds, which is super quick. This is a long vehicle and it really does have an exquisite look through the windscreen because you can tell how wide and long the vehicle is just by the stance of it. So I do like that. We're going to put it in sport mode. We're gonna see how well she goes and performs as soon as the light turns green. Here we go. It is super nice. I like the athletic stance that you get. It pushes you back with a nice crisp but luxury twist. The seats, very comfortable. Dual pane windows all over, so you're not gonna really hear anything but the exhaust note. And that's actually what you wanna hear, especially when it downshifts from that ZF eight-speed automatic transmission. So it does have a really smooth sound to it. I'm gonna hear it again. And this is why you buy a Maserati Quattroporte, because you get that smooth exhaust sound. It is just tremendous. They did a great job keeping it even when they changed to the twin turbo engine, which was a big factor in this particular brand. They were, a lot of people were concerned, is it still going to have that really throaty V8 sound? And I think they really do a good job, even though this is a V6 twin turbo, it really, has a good hit to it and you don't hear a spit which is something that i do like because with twin turbos you don't really want to hear pss, pss, pss. not when you're getting into this price point driving the vehicle on an everyday basis is not going to be an issue at all dynamics you can see it stays pretty planted and it's ready to rock and roll a 4951 weight distribution if you need better than that the ghibli will be a perfect 50 50 so that's gonna be a little bit smaller also in the wheelbase and length. This one's gonna be a little bit longer, but comparing it against the Mercedes S-Class, the BMW 7 Series, or the Porsche Panamera, I think this is a great alternative, especially when you think of the savings you're getting and you're into an Italian brand, which is exotic. The other vehicles are going to be more known for like everyday use. When you pull up in this, people are gonna say, wow, that's awesome, you got a Maserati. The updates that they added from 2021 with the infotainment screen in the gauge cluster really does change the whole image of the front too, because it really makes that luxury styling cues that it wasn't necessarily missing, but it was something that I complained about and people were always like, oh, well, it's derived out of, you know, Chrysler bins. At the end of the day, it's not like anybody makes these infotainment screens except for people like Android. So if they're the ones making it, who the hell cares where it's coming from at the end of the day? As long as the damn thing works good and seamless, and this is one of the better units that I've actually seen, especially with performance and less glitch. So those are very important attributes. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that, I'd be buying this vehicle. The three things that I like, I mean, if you need performance, you just, and you got it. And this is the GT line. So you have the less of the horsepower. It's not tweaked to the full capacity, but you're still getting zero to 60 at five seconds with the length of this vehicle. It is insane. The weight is going to be the less compared to all of the rivals. It maxes out to a little bit over 4,400 pounds. So it's not necessarily the heaviest vehicle, but the dynamics 
it's just a brilliant vehicle. The second thing that I like about it is how they keep the attributes all the way to the heritage of the first Quattroporte in the sense of being a four-door sedan, being long, low, wide. They just nailed it right on the head. Turn radius and more or less a stop point should be getting us about two and a part a lane, which is pretty obvious because of the length. And here we go. And that's just in normal to show you the difference. You're gonna have a throatier exhaust note in the sport mode. The last thing that I like about the vehicle is the fact that you can compare this to all of luxury and even fits in the category of exotic, which you can't do that with the Mercedes S-Class, you can't do it with the BMW 7 Series, you can't really do it with the Porsche Panamera. So this sets itself in a different segment, which is something that, again, like I was saying before, when you pull up to anyone's house with this vehicle, they're gonna say, whoa, you're doing good, man. And that's really something that you want to hear when you get out of your vehicle, not pulling up next to somebody in the stoplight that's the same vehicle. Three things that I dislike about the vehicle is I do wish that they implemented a base 400 horsepower. Yes, the horsepower has increased over the years and being in its sixth generation, they're doing a great job with it. And five seconds is really fast for the weight and the length and the weight distribution all mixed in. And the ZF transmission also helps with that as well. It's just, it would be nice to see something at a flat 400 horsepower, even at the GT line level. The second thing that I dislike about the vehicle is the storage. Even in my own personal Maserati, it does lack a little bit in that in the door panel wise. Everywhere else is fine. It's just really the door panel. I wish that they would open it up just a little bit more so that way you can actually fit a 20 ounce bottle in there because 16.9 ounce is really the max of it. The last thing that I dislike about the vehicle is the gauge cluster because when you go into Mercedes or BMW, it's a digital reader. And I like the digital readout that they give you because it's more configurable. It looks very futuristic but it's a very solid car. It's really hard to nitpick things that you dislike about a Maserati because you get the luxury and you get the performance and it's a timeless masterpiece at the end of the day. I like to thank Maserati of Tampa for giving us this 2022 Maserati Quattroporte GT for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button, check out the details, the merchandise, the website, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rocks.